Heroes are brave, determined, compassionate, and resilient. They rush in to help others in the face of danger and adversity. They're selfless and willing to put others' needs ahead of their own. Our hero was a military genius. He built a small navy, led the military through the wilderness, went against the odds to save his own military unit. He led an untrained military to several victories. He was wounded on the battlefield on more than one occasion. Yes, our hero was brave and determined and a brilliant soldier. Benedict Arnold was a hero until he turned into a villain. Yes, Benedict Arnold was a flawed character. He was born in Norwich, Connecticut. His mother died at a young age. His dad was a drunk and got in the family deep into debt. Arnold became such a brilliant businessman that he was able to buy the family homestead back that was sold to pay off these debts. He also owned a fleet of ships. He was able to marry the town beauty, the daughter of the town sheriff. His business was soon squeezed by the oppressive British taxes and their policies. He soon became an intense patriot and joined the famed Sons of Liberty. After Lexington and Concord, he decided to join the military. The forces were untrained and poorly equipped. This frustrated him at times. He assisted Ethan Allen in the Battle of Ticonderoga. Allen's men were just looking for booze while Allen was trying to get arms to send back to Boston. Later, he got 1,100 men and went in a campaign against Quebec, but to get there, he had to go through the wilderness in Maine. As the men were marching through rain, ice, and snow, eating anything they could find, candles, dogs, and shoe leather, he got the name America's Hannibal. While in Quebec, he was shot in the left leg. He became so famous for this raid that Thomas Jefferson himself praised him before the Continental Congress. He built a small navy and was able to slow down the British as they were coming down Lake Champlain. At the siege of Fort Stanwyck, Arnold himself was able to convince the British that he had a larger force and was able to break that siege. Later, he went to Saratoga. The British were heavily outnumbered, but the American forces were extremely untrained and undisciplined. Horatio Gates was in charge of this army. He and Arnold got into some words and Horatio Gates made him leave the field. Hearing that the battle was turning, Arnold jumped, went to the call, rallied the troops, and was able to defeat the British. In doing so, he had a near fatal shot to the same left leg that was wounded in Quebec. While in a hospital bed in Albany, he found out that General Horatio Gates had claimed credit for this British surrender. How could Horatio Gates, who had mismanaged the army, take credit for this victory that was won by the blood of these brave men? After having Frankensteinish surgery, his left leg was now two inches shorter. He went to Valley Forge to the applause of everyone that served him in Saratoga. While there, he signed the Oath of Allegiance, Loyalty to America. George Washington liked Arnold a lot. Benedict Arnold was disrespected by Congress, passed over time and time again for promotion. Even though he's a hero and led the armies to many victories, Congress would not promote him. He decided that Arnold was not fit for field duty and gave him the appointment of military commander of Philadelphia. While in Philly, he was living an extravagant lifestyle and was putting himself even deeper into debt. He met 18-year-old Peggy Shipton, the daughter of a loyalist. They began mingling with the British loyalists in the city. People took note of this. He married this young beauty and she had his ear, kind of like Adam and Eve. He complained to various military people about the state of the country, the military, and the bickering in Congress. He was starting to think that maybe they should give up the revolution and go back with Britain. Arnold was accused of profiting from the war-related supply movements. He wanted to clear his name and asked for a court-martial. He tried to leave the military, but Washington kept on urging him to stay. In 1779, he was court-martialed. He was acquitted of all charges except for two. Whether it was fair or not, he was reprimanded for two misdemeanor counts of derelict of duty. Arnold was disgraced at the hand of men that he blamed for corrupting the revolution. Washington knew that he was unhappy and gave him command of West Point. He was getting very unhappy. He began writing coded messages to Major John Andre of the British Army. It said that his wife was the one who got in contact with Major Andre. Even Benjamin Franklin's son William was involved. He began plotting to turn over Washington and West Point. While at West Point, he began systematically making the fort weaker. Now here's where everything turned. He had met Andre, gave him the plans of the fort. 
Andre went back and was caught. When they brought Major Andre and the plans to Washington, he was very upset. Washington, even though he liked Andre, decided to hang him. When he found out that it was Benedict Arnold, Washington is famous for saying, who can we trust now? Arnold had betrayed millions of Americans, betrayed his country. He betrayed his own military, his own leader, George Washington. Just like Judas Iscariot, he sold the Americans out for 20,000 British pounds, which is about five to six million dollars in today's money. They did not give Arnold the 20,000 pounds. They only gave him about six because he could not deliver West Point or Washington. The British assigned him the rank of Brigadier General. He led some raids in Virginia. Then he went to his home state of Connecticut and led more raids. At the Battle of Groton Heights, he slaughtered the Americans after they surrendered. This was only a few miles down the road from Norwich where he grew up. He advised Cornwallis not to camp near the coast, which was brilliant. Except Cornwallis didn't listen to him and made his camp at Yorktown. That would have saved the whole British army. No one on either side ever trusted Benedict Arnold. He was a traitor. No one likes a traitor. Benedict Arnold is known as one of the greatest traitors in history. Even the hero of Saratoga has a monument to him. It has all the great things he had done, except for his name. After Washington discovered he betrayed his country, he was so upset that he started removing Benedict Arnold's records. All the brave accomplishments he had done, gone. After the war, he moved back to London, but was never trusted by anybody. On Benedict Arnold's deathbed, he's possibly quoted as saying, let me die in this old uniform in which I fought my battles. May God forgive me for ever having put on another. He died in 1801. Well, the story of Benedict Arnold is extremely sad. Was it his loyalist wife that has ear? Was it his injuries that he sustained in battle or the constant Passover for promotion? What is it that made him do what he did? It must have been a combination of all three. Was Benedict Arnold truly a hero or a zero? That is strange indeed. Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll keep the videos coming here on Strange History. Hey, check out this video about the Titanic. There were many heroes on that ship.